when it comes to reading comprehension, there are two things that we often hear. One, once students can decode or read the text, they will naturally be able to comprehend the information. And two, you can't teach comprehension explicitly. The only way to build comprehension is by building background knowledge and exposure to the topic. Now, in reality, neither of these things is true. In today's video, we're going to be sharing an explicit comprehension strategy that you can use to help your students comprehend information that they hear or read more effectively. I'm Corey with Ascend Smarter Intervention, where we make research-based instruction both easy and accessible. And in today's video, we are going to be sharing the explicit comprehension strategy that you can use and a structured comprehension guide that you can use. So make sure to go into the details and grab that guide so that you can use this strategy with your students as well. When we think about reading comprehension, there are five levels of comprehension that students need to be able to progress through. You want students to understand these different levels so that they can understand where they should be when they are listening to information or reading information. The five levels are one, recall, two, organize, three, connect, four, leap, and five, analyze. Now, in the first level, where we want to start thinking about recalling information directly from the text, one of the strategies that we would like to use is called five W's. Now, with the five W's, we're thinking about who, what, when, where, and why. This is a great strategy because this is going to help students start to clue into the specific information that they should be listening for or looking for when they are reading. A lot of times, this information is provided directly within the text. That's going to be a foundation for the higher levels of comprehension that we're going to be working through next. Once students have gotten familiar with and comfortable with directly recalling information from the text using the five W's, we can move on to the second level. The second level of comprehension is organized. Now, once we have those key details, we need to start to organize that information so that we can better hold on to it in our short term working memory so that we can retain that later on and recall it when perhaps we need it for a test or just so that we have that in our everyday knowledge. When we organize, there are two main ways that we want to organize text. First, we can be thinking about sequencing the information. Now, there's many ways that we can sequence information. We could do that simply through a first, next, then, last. We can do it in chronological order. We can do it in a step-by-step -step sequence list for directions or lists. We can do it in a cycle. There's a lot of ways that we can sequence the information, but we do want to sequence it in a logical order. Then, once we've sequenced that information, we can start to think about how does all of that information come together? What's the main idea? How are all of those things similar? So again, thinking back to the five W's or the key details in the sequence that we've put together, what's the big picture here? How can I give that a title or a label? And that's our main idea. Then once we've moved through recall and organizing that information, we can move into connecting. Now, when we start connecting, this is where we really get into higher level comprehension. This is where we can start to think about background knowledge and what's the information that I already know that I can start to connect this new information to. So one of the things that we like to do with our students when we are working on connecting to information is eliciting background knowledge. You can do that using what we call a KWL or a know, want to know, and learn framework. When students are working through that KWL, you can go back to the five W's and ask them, what do you already know about who or what? What do you already know about when, where, why related to this topic? And that's where we can start to think about what's the information that we should be pulling or that we want to be pulling as we are listening to or reading information. Then once we have that information, we can start to make connections. So we can make connections to ourselves. We can make connections to other texts, 
We can make connections to the world. All of these things are important and they're gonna help students be able to retain and hold on to that information most effectively. Now we can also think about connecting information within the text itself, or we can think about relationships that exist. So this is where compare and contrast or cause and effect relationships can absolutely come into comprehension. Now, once we have gone through the first three steps, recall, organize, and connect, we want to make the biggest leap, which is step four, leaping with that information. Once we have the key details and have organized that information effectively, we've made connections, we can start to make a leap through inferences and predictions, where we can start to take, what do I know? What does the text say? And what guesses can I make about now or the future? And that's where inference and prediction come in really handy. The last level that we want to think about is analyze. Now, analyze is really important because this is where students can start to reflect on what it is that they've read or what it is that they've heard and what they're going to take away from that. This is a really great place to get reflexive questioning where you can truly just ask students, what lesson do you take away? Do you agree with this? Does this fit with what you already know? Does it offer a new perspective? Do you trust this information or not? This is really helpful because what we can realize is that sometimes students have a hard time getting to this highest level and sometimes students immediately jump to this highest level and we want them to be working through those immediate or those first levels first before getting here. Now that is our five step process that we use and we want students to be thinking about this as a framework to understanding information. Now, all of these pieces don't always apply to every single piece of information that students have, but if they can work through this framework, they are going to comprehend the information that they hear or read much more effectively. Like I said at the beginning, make sure to download this structured comprehension guide so that you can use this strategy with your students as well. I will be linking to a blog that explains this strategy in more detail. And if you like this video, make sure to click like and subscribe so that you can be the first to know when we drop new videos with tips, tricks, and free resources. Hopefully this strategy helps and we can't wait to hear how it goes.